What's going on, friends? It is no secret that Harley-Davidson is very slow to make changes, and in a lot of cases, that is not necessarily a bad thing. But in fact, Harley-Davidson has just released the most advanced 45-degree V-twin that they have in their entire history, and not to mention with some very impressive numbers to go with it. So the company is moving forward, but there is one little detail that you may have missed. And to me, it really looks like Harley-Davidson is really trying to groom us for what's getting ready to come down the pipeline in the future. Harley-Davidson releasing the new CVOs has shown us some widespread sweeping changes across the motorcycles in styling and aesthetics and just the overall look and feel of the bikes. But there is one little styling cue that you may not have paid a lot of attention to. Now the new CVO models, these are all twin cooled, naturally being the CVO, Harley Davidson's going to throw everything that they have at it. But it is the way that they did the twin cooling system on the new CVO motorcycles that is really probably signaling something towards the future. Everything at Harley Davidson really starts out on the CVO line and then slowly over time this starts to trickle down into the touring bikes and then from the touring bikes we start to see it in the soft tail models. So this right here is a good indication of what's to come. Now, for example, the Milwaukee 8, the 117, that was a exclusive to the CVO line only, but time went on. Now you can get the 117 in a soft tail and even in a non-CVO touring bike. Guys, please don't forget, if you enjoyed today's video, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, uncharacteristic of Harley-Davidson, here as of late, they've been moving forward at a pretty rapid pace. Well, at least for Harley-Davidson anyhow. Now, for years, Harley-Davidson's never came with a factory oil cooler on any motorcycle outside of the touring line. And in fact, Harley-Davidson really wanted to put one on there, but styling always said no to adding the oil cooler. But now with the Milwaukee 8s, the soft tails came out, there was a little placement of that oil cooler on the down tubes on the front of the motorcycle, kind of in the area where you might normally see a radiator on your basically run-of-the-mill water-cooled cruiser. Now, we all know Harley-Davidson isn't going to be able to produce just air and oil-cooled motorcycles forever. Emissions are getting tighter, and eventually they're going to have to do something. Because these air and oil-cooled bikes, they can literally only run so hot. And if you ride a twin cam, a fuel-injected twin cam, you know exactly what I mean. Because the twin cams, they basically ran a lot leaner and a lot hotter than they were really ever designed to do. Now, with the oil cooler on the Milwaukee 8 soft tails, it's being tucked in between the down tubes on the frame rail, that's, as I mentioned, where a radiator would be on a water-cooled cruiser. One thing you may not have caught is that Harley-Davidson updated the design of their engine guards on their touring bikes here in the later years. Now, on the twin-cooled motorcycles using the old-style engine guards, they hid the radiators away inside housings that were attached hanging out on these engine guards, which, honestly, to me, it really didn't look too bad, and it was a pretty good way to hide the radiators and still kind of keep the overall look of the motorcycle. Now, with the release of the new CVO motorcycles, yes, they are twin-cooled, but they do use that updated engine guard design. So that pretty much made it impossible to go with the old-style radiator design. Now, what they did was they've taken the radiator and they placed the radiator down low in the space where the oil cooler on a touring bike would normally occupy. Now, this is interesting as it is a bit more discreet, and not to mention, it's also going to carry that weight of the radiator. I mean, I know it's not a whole lot, but it's still going to carry that weight down lower instead of having the radiators and that extra weight hanging off the side of the motorcycle. And even being down low, it still should get plenty of airflow, just like the oil coolers being located down on the bottom of the down tubes did on all previous versions of the touring bikes. Now, of course, with the release of the new CVO, they did not go to a mono shock design. They still have the old school twin shock design out back, but that's a topic for a whole other video and kind of interesting why they haven't went to a mono shock yet, especially on the CVO. Now, given historically what Harley Davidson does with everything starting on the CVO and then trickling down to all the non CVO models, we're probably going to see on the twin cooled touring bikes the radiators getting moved from out on the crash bars to down low, down in the center, where the oil cooler is basically the space where it used to occupy. This is going to expand to all of the touring line. That's just my prediction. And given historically with Harley-Davidson, that's more than likely what's going to happen. Now, this design is interesting the way they did it, because this style of radiator, when the placement of it, this is something that kind of leads me to believe that, honestly, that style would fit really well on the soft tail line. Unless Harley-Davidson decides to replace the oil cooler with a radiator on the down tubes on the soft tail line, which, honestly, I don't see that happening. 
it's really looking like twin cooling is going to be the future for Harley Davidson. And they're going to expand the twin cooling onto all touring bikes and even the soft tail models. But as you know, the original twin cooling design, the way it was on the old style crash bars and the radiators hanging out there, that is not a design that's going to look good or work well with the aesthetics of a soft tail motorcycle. But this new design, this could look right at home on a soft tail pretty easily. Now I think it's a pretty safe bet that Harley Davidson isn't going to suddenly just drop the Milwaukee 8 and go with a completely water-cooled engine like they did in the Sportster line. That's pretty much going to alienate everybody that honestly well hasn't been run off by the Milwaukee 8 by now. It's really worth paying attention to what Harley Davidson is doing now because the motorcycles that they're coming out with now, these are going to be the used motorcycles in the future and that time is going to come a lot quicker than we think. It's going to be here before we know it. The way things are looking, I am definitely foreseeing variable valve timing and twin cooling eventually making its way into every Milwaukee 8 Harley Davidson, whether it be a soft tail or a touring model. Now make no mistake, that new 121 inch CVO motor, that thing does make some very impressive horsepower and torque, and for once, Harley Davidson actually shared the horsepower with us. This bike is making 139 foot-pounds of torque and 115 horsepower right out of the box. And I would like to think a lot of that power comes from the variable valve timing system on this bike. I mean, not to mention, you know, the increased displacement. They do have a different set of heads and likely a different cam in it being a CVO. But still, that is really impressive power for a bone stock Harley Davidson right off the showroom floor. Now, it'll be interesting to see what kind of power a 114 and a 117 can make if they start applying the variable valve timing to these motors, which I highly, highly anticipate that Harley-Davidson is going to be doing in the near future. Twin cooling has been an excellent way for Harley-Davidson to really kind of dip their toes into the water cooling realm. This allows it to still be a Harley-Davidson, still give the rider a much better riding experience with not feeling as much heat, and at the same time, it also helps meet emissions, they can raise the compression, they can do a lot with having the heads cooled off. So honestly, I'm really kind of looking forward to seeing this expand to the soft tail and the rest of the touring line. But guys, I do want your opinions. Do you think that Harley Davidson is gonna move forward with water cooling and variable valve timing across the soft tail line and the touring line? Is everything gonna get done up the same way? What's your opinions and what do you think about it? Do you think Harley Davidson is moving in the right direction? My opinion, they've only got one direction to go because emissions are going to squeeze them out if they don't do something. But anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. Please don't forget if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But till next week guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.